Hello friends, welcome to Cosmic Coaching. I'm Bobby, and I have kind of a weird one for you guys today. Let me ask you, do you know when Antarctica was discovered? Hmm? So there is a little bit of controversy around this. The majority of people, the consensus is, is that it was discovered around 1820, which 1820 is only 200 years ago. That's not that long ago. During this time, it was believed that there was a continent down there, but it hadn't been officially discovered. So there was this race amongst explorers to be the first one to discover it. So like I said, there's some controversy over who actually discovered it, but we are going to go with the general consensus, which was that Antarctica was discovered on January 27th, 1820 by a Russian expedition led by Fabian Gottlieb von Bellinghausen and Mikhail Lazarev. They discovered an ice shelf at Princess Martha Coast that later became known as the Fimble Ice Shelf. And they are quoted as the first explorers to see and officially discover the land of the continent Antarctica. That's like the general consensus is that that is how it happened. But if it wasn't these two specific people, the general belief is that Antarctica was discovered sometime between like 1818 and 1820, somewhere in there. Even if these men were not the first actual people to step onto it. it. It was within this time period. Okay, so we have established that the world agrees and the history books and everything else, we all agree that Antarctica was discovered approximately 1820-ish. So then, if that is true, why is Antarctica on maps from 1513? Yeah, this one's crazy, you guys. I did a lot of research and I have a lot of different screens up in front of me that I'm going to be reading from because I wanna give you guys this like exact information. Let me give you a little backstory on the map that I'm talking about. And there's also a couple other maps that we're going to discuss in this video as well. The first map we're going to talk about is the Perry Reese map. This is a map that was dated as having been created in 1513, but no one knew that this map existed. This map was found in 1929 in what's called the Top Copy Palace Library. The entire map was not found. There was only a portion of it. And what they believe is the portion that they found is one third of the map. Let me give you a little bit of background on who Perry Reese was as a person. His actual name was Ahmad Muhyiddin Perry, but he was better known as Perry Reese. He was a Turkish Ottoman navigator, geographer, and cartographer. A cartographer is someone who is specialized in creating maps. There is a lot that would go into people becoming cartographers. This was a, definitely a skill and it was something that you had to learn. So not anybody could just create maps. Perry Reese is primarily known today for his maps and charts. What is so amazing is how relatively accurate his charts were for the time. He would describe ports that were in the Mediterranean. He drew on his maps mountain ranges in South America that had never been seen. These are things like he, he was able to depict these areas of land. It was amazing and it was accurate. The most well-known map Perry Reese created is the Perry Reese map, which shows this area that some believe includes Antarctica and you know from 1513 which it shouldn't have been there. When the map was discovered in 1929 it was also found with a handwritten note from Perry Reese and in the handwritten note Perry Reese cited his sources what he used to create his map and he states that he compiled his map using multiple other maps and charts as primary sources. These included eight Ptolemaic maps, four Portuguese maps, one Arabic map, and one drawn by Christopher Columbus. Also, when drawing up his map, Perry Reese consulted as many as 20 other maps, some dating as far back as Alexander the Great. But he was very, very careful to note all of his sources. He cited everything. So what does this mean? This means that Perry Reese had access to maps that showed Antarctica. When we look back in human history, based on our understanding, there would be no way for Perry Reese to know that Antarctica existed unless it was on those other maps. So that means that those other older source maps were based on older information. There is a lot of controversy over this Perry Reese map. And I really wanted to pick apart the arguments because I, I feel like I wanna give you guys a very balanced presentation of information so that you can make up your own minds. I was researching the validity of the map and then I was also researching arguments against it. I wanted to debunk the map. I wanted people to give me all of the reasons why the map was a fraud and it couldn't be real. 
And I have to tell you, there's no good argument against it. So some people will say that the way that it the map is is that he ran out of room and he swung up the the tip of south america but this is such a detailed map you cannot tell me that someone who's going to put this much detail into this map is going to at the very bottom of it run out of room and just scribble on the bottom of a continent that that doesn't make any sense to me as i was searching this out i found some really interesting photos that show that outline of the Perry Reese map as an overlay on current maps and it fits. It fits exactly how we have maps today. The other arguments that I've heard against the Perry Reese maps were that there was no way that humans at that point with technology could have had the, the knowledge or wherewithal or the tools to make that journey. By that alone, that means it's just, it can't be accurate, which that to me is not an argument. And a lot of the research I've done, they talk a lot about how some cartographers would assume that there was land just based on kind of like the distribution of land mass on the globe. Apparently, it was common for some cartographers to use this continent that they would refer to as Terra Australis. And it was just an assumed continent. But when you look at the Perry Reese map, you can see where there are ports and it's detailed. So why would this person who has spent their whole life making maps and creates all this detail would just put an assumed continent? That does not make any sense. Another argument that they are saying that I found online is that the last time that because they're saying that what they're seeing of Antarctica is the land minus the glacier. So it's like what the actual land is. Right now, we can't really determine the shape of the land because it's blocked by ice. So there's no way to just confirm, hey, is this Antarctica? Because it, it's going to look different. So the argument is that the last time Antarctica was not covered in ice and snow would have been 15 million years ago. And so they say, well, obviously there weren't humans here 15 million years ago, so there's no way that this could be real. I might be more inclined to look into the theory that the Perry Reese map isn't correct. However, what's preventing me from, from even really being able to do that is we have two more maps, you guys. We have the Orontius Phineas map, which was from 1531, which again shows what is believed to be Antarctica off of the bottom portion of South America. The other map that we have is the Bausch map. The Bausch map was drawn by French geographer by the name of Philippe Bausch de la Neuville. The Bausch map was created by a French geographer, and it is believed that it was published in 1737. However, there is a little controversy because it could potentially have been September 3rd, 1739. They believe it was released in 1737, but there they found something later that had a publication date of September 3rd, 1739. So regardless, it was created in 1737 or 1739. Again, this is 100 years almost before we supposedly discovered Antarctica. So this map that Bausch used older source maps for also includes Antarctica. So what does this all mean? I see some stuff online where people are like, oh, you know, they're, they're trying to discredit it by saying that, oh, there's crazy people out there that believe that aliens came down and, and you know, talk to these cartographers and, and help them make maps. I don't necessarily believe that story. Here's my theory, okay? My theory is that ancient humans were much more advanced than we believe. For some reason in archaeology, and I see this in with like religion, religion too. It's, there's this desire to hold on to the stories that have been told to us forever. But what if those stories are wrong? What if these stories that we're being told are absolutely not correct? And what if there was an advanced civilization that had the technology and the ability to understand and know all of this? And maybe the information was passed down. Perhaps they had some type of ancient knowledge. We know that there are things we don't know, right? So we know that the Sphinx at one point in time was in water. There was There is water erosion damage. And we also know that it is much older than it has been believed to be. There's also issues with all of the pyramids. 
pyramids. You know, we were told that the Pyramid of Giza was actually a tomb. Well, we know now it wasn't a tomb. It was something else. All of the pyramids and all of these ancient structures that we're seeing, they all have very specific alignments and calculations that are either things that align with the stars, align with constellations, align with, you know, with, with such perfect precision. If an ancient civilization had the ability to create these massive monolithic structures with such specific accuracy, then of course they can create a map of the earth in its entirety. I just don't see any argument that can be used to really discredit this. There are a few things with the Bausch and the Orentius Phineas map that are a little bit like off. So those things definitely need to be considered. And I would encourage you, do your own research. I always want people to do their own research. Don't ever take something that someone tells you and just believe it as fact. You should question everything you're told. Question everything. Question me. Question everything and do your own research because that's what I did for this. I learned about this on I think a show or something and I found it fascinating but instead of just jumping on and doing a video I decided you know what I'm going to do some research I want to really see what this is I want to see if it holds up and I cannot find an argument against this that actually makes sense So I want to give you guys a little more detailed information now that we're kind of getting towards like the end of the video about the Perry Reese map, because I think that this is so fascinating. So if you want to stick around for like the, you know, going down the rabbit hole with me, some interesting things that I found while researching this Perry Reese map is that South America was connected to Antarctica. One idea of how this broke apart was kind of that theory of at one point the continents were connected and then with the shifting of the tectonic plates under the earth, they have slowly drifted apart. So the thought is, is that even if this area was the last area to break apart, it was still before human exploration. So if it was before human exploration, Perry Reese, how did he know Where did he get his information from? There's also a very interesting note. So Perry Reese did a lot of notes on his map. And in one spot, he added a note and it translated to read, it is related by the Portuguese infidel that in this spot, night and day are at their shortest of two hours and at their longest 22 hours. He's talking about, you know, the tilt of the earth and the solstices, but no known Portuguese sailor had ever ventured that far south in the 1500s. So where would that person have gotten that knowledge? And that's why a lot of people are questioning this whole idea of our history. And there is a thought that at the end of the last ice age, there was an event, a catastrophic event, which we believe is was a meteor hitting earth, which created rapid, rapid melting of ice and massive amounts of flooding and storms. This is referred to as the Younger Dryas. And this was 12,000 years ago. The thought is that there could have been an advanced civilization living here on earth at that time that were almost completely wiped out during the end of the last ice age. And the people who survived gave the information, this ancient knowledge, passed it on to the people who survived so that they could rebuild. You know, we go back and we look at the Sphinx and we look at the water damage on it. And the water damage on that Sphinx was 12,000 years ago. So what do you guys think? Do you think that this is just like baloney? Do you think that these are real maps and they came from sources that had been passed down that were ancient? Do you think that the information was passed from aliens to humans? Like, what do you guys think? I want your input because I find this stuff so fascinating, but I like to hear what other people think. And I like to really keep an open mind. So if you have an opinion on this, please leave it in the comment section down below because I would love to hear it. If you found this video interesting and you want to see more content like this, then please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Also, if you have not already subscribed, please take a moment to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you're notified every time I upload a new video. Also, this channel has a Facebook page. We have Instagram. We have all the social media. Check that out down below. There's also a link to my website. And on the website is where I keep all of my most up-to-date information. So definitely go check that out. That's where I also give information on all of the services and things I offer and things I do. So check that out if you're interested. I want to thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.